Hey folks, welcome to Market Intraday Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. Today, Tuesday, February 8th, 2011. Well, folks, the markets are hovering flat to slightly higher again today. The volume is anemic, and you can see it on my chart here. Take a look at the lower portion down here. Look at this, folks. Again, just declining volume throughout the day. The markets have been floating sideways to up for most of the day. We hit a beautiful double top here. Absolutely beautiful double top, in which case you pulled back, which is expected. Again, anytime you hit a level from yesterday's high, and again, it retraces to that high today, you should expect a little bit of a pullback, and you got that. The markets pulled back into the 50 moving average and are now floating back up but we've been in a very very tight range not a lot of volatility you can see slow moves up pullbacks up again pull back and now up as we go and again the markets are just holding steady in this direction and again markets slightly higher with the Dow Jones industrial average up 43 points Nasdaq up three and the S&P 500 up about two now look, the keys here are to look at what's strong today IBM IBM very very strong today that's a key get Dow component now again the Dow is up 43 points on the day, uh, about one-third of one percent, and you have to understand what's driving the Dow today. It's, believe it or not, it's not ExxonMobil or Chevron. ExxonMobil and Chevron are both down on the day. What's driving it is IBM. IBM is a key component, one of the 30 Dow stocks that's up sizably today, up $1.50, and also McDonald's. McDonald's had very, very good earnings, and as you can see here, a monster move on McDonald's. It has pulled off the highs, but nonetheless, that's probably due for about 10 points alone in the Dow, this move on McDonald's today. All right, IBM probably adds another five to six points at least, so that makes up probably about almost 15 to 20 points of the Dow being up today. Chevron and Exxon are, are not up today, down slightly. J.P. Morgan's up about 20 cents, but that's not a big move on J.P. Morgan in terms of having an impact on the Dow. All right, what's the culprit today for the up market? Obviously, the light volume. People continue to kind of wait to see if there's anything new out of the Mideast, out of that Northern Africa, Egyptian area. Uh, is there anything coming down the pipeline with the Suez Canal? It doesn't seem like that at this point, so that's part of it. It, all right. In addition, the the kind of market is very, very lethargic. You get that lethargic sense that no one thinks the market can go down. Now, normally you'd look at that as a bearish indicator, but the problem is you have the Federal Reserve out there with the pedal to the metal keeping the markets up. And again, POMO, which is uh, QE2, continues to be used to prop the markets up. So that has to be watched very closely again, and we will watch it in the afternoon session and in the nightly videos tonight in the Research Center. By the way, uh, more solid key things to look at, guys. Again, the trades continue to be posted on the hot charts and alerts on the Pro Trader watch list. The videos come out every single night in the Research Center. And again, everything's included in the Research Center, and you can take a free trial now. So we encourage you to take that free trial if you haven't tried our services yet. All right, now let's take a look at the dollar today. The UUP, which is the dollar index, interesting how the dollar fell sharply early on. Now, early on going into about the midday session, this is exactly what happened yesterday. Here's yesterday on the UUP, which is the dollar ETF. Notice the fall here into the same time frame, right to 1130. And again, that's, that screams manipulation when it does at the same time every day, right here, bottoms at the same point yesterday before that bounce, and then it came down later in the day. But same thing again today, bottoms at that same exact time, and then reverses to the upside. This time you haven't had a pullback yet, but nonetheless, we have to watch as it's into the 50 moving average on an intraday basis. So watch that very, very closely, folks. All right, dollar again lower on the day, which makes sense that the markets are slightly higher on the day. And again, just notice the initial drop here coincides with the initial push up on the Dow, excuse me, on the S&P right here, on the SPY right there, before you get that little initial pullback. All right, stocks to watch. Let's first take a look at the GLD, which is gold. Gold having a very strong day, so gold higher on a little weakness in the dollar overall. Uh, another strong showing here on oil. Oil was down sharply early, rallied back to go sharply positive, then pulled back, now bouncing again. Very wild trade on oil. Uh, China raised interest rates last night for the second time in one month, and that again did put initial pressure on oil, but oil has sold off pretty sharply over the last couple days, and it's coming back on the strong side now. So again, keep an eye on that, and watch to see where that oil trade ends. If we look at the daily chart on oil, you can see again it gapped down, not quite to a double bottom where you'd like to see it for a buy, but close to it, and then it's reversed a little bit on the day. All right. Now, some stocks to watch. We talked about ExxonMobil. Exxon's having a pullback. Exxon's due for a pullback. If I zoom out on the chart, take a look at the move that this thing has had. Very, very toppy, and it must be watched for a possible continued pullback. Chevron, same thing, with oil kind of being on the flat side. Uh, money is, seems to be flowing out of the oil trade and out of oil stocks today, just a little bit anyways. ConocoPhillips, COP. Let's take a look at COP. Same thing, down about 50 cents on the day, coming off the 52-week highs up here on ConocoPhillips. All right. 
so stay tuned to that. Uh, some small caps to watch, guys. I just posted this to my members in the research center to watch. Uh, it's PARD. It's a key biotech, small cap biotech trading near the 52-week lows after being all the way to 75 cents up here. It's come all the way back in. No real news there either. It just came back all the way in. Looks like it's bottoming just off the lows here, double bottom lows, and it might be starting a little bit of a move up. The reason why I put it on the watch list today for our members and why they got it early, obviously, was because of SNSS, which is another same type of biotech. It it ran up here, came all the way down, and then the last few days it's inched up. Today it's getting a pop of about 10%. Same general chart, the up move, and then the pullback. Same general price area, 40 cent range. So again, with both of these trading in the same range, same general thing, biotech, small caps, micro cap, pennies, you have to think that they're going to sympathy play to each other. And therefore, PARD may be a play that moves up. So we'll watch that in the afternoon session, but it wouldn't surprise me to see that. And again, I gave that out to my members in the Research Center. If you're part of the Research Center, you got an alert on it via text or email. And again, we're privy to that information a while ago. All right, so that's something to watch there as well. We can take a look at some other stocks here. Freeport MacMoran is down about 22 cents. Interesting to see Freeport MacMoran down when gold is up, but copper's under a little bit of pressure today, so that's part of it as well. Uh, what else do we want to take a look at? JP Morgan, as I mentioned, up about 20 cents. That stock continues to trade at the high levels up here. As you can see, it's just chopping sideways. It looks like it's tired, but it just won't break the 20 to the downside. Again, the 20 to the downside break would probably send it to the 50, but as long as you stay above here, you could go to a level of 48. Believe it or not, 48 is a good level to watch on that stock and must be watched very closely, in my opinion. All right, again, $48. Keep an eye on that level. Goldman Sachs remains up a dollar fifteen on the day. This stock has come through a little bit of a necktie, which is actually bullish. This is actually very bullish on the stock, assuming it closes up in this range, which again, with the light volume today in the market, is most likely going to happen. That would be slightly bullish. I wouldn't be buying it up here, but if it consolidates and stays above in the consolidation pattern, creating a bull flag, that's when you jump on board, in my opinion. That's when you go for it and again take a shot at it if it does that price pattern and timing that we're looking for. All right. Now, again, a couple other things to note here. Solar stocks are a little bit weaker. Ag stocks are uh, mixed to a little bit weaker as well. I would say Potash is down a buck eighty-three or so. Uh, Baidu and Google are both up. Apple's up another three dollars on the day. Amazon's up about three dollars and change. And again. Research in motion is flat on the day. Intel's down about 13 cents. Uh, Cisco, which was a great call from yesterday, folks. I gave Cisco out even in the, in the intraday video. We discussed it. Uh, short on a pierce of the 200. Look at the pullback it's had off of that. No-brainer one- or two-day swing trade right there. And again, if you utilize things correctly, you should be making very, very good money just by utilizing the levels. And that's what we cover in the Research Center. I encourage you to join it. Uh, chat room is great, too, if you have a little time during the intraday. But Research Center is really the staple for every smart swing trader and investor out there. Even day traders, again, use it because of the biases and the, the angles of the market that we look at uh, and the calls that we give out. It's just genius all the way through there in the intraday period and in the swing trade period for the research center. All right, let's just talk about a couple other things here. Uh, Cisco, we said IBM, again, is a strong one here, trading above 165. I think that the 165 and above finally has signaled an overbought level. I kept on talking about this fake print right here as being where this stock has to go to at least before you think about a pullback in IBM. It's now there a little bit above even, and I do think that's a possibility for a pullback now above 165, although there are weaker stocks probably looking better for shorts overall, but I do think, again, that is good for a pullback in this range now. All right, uh, NASDAQ again up about three and change today. Uh, Dow is up about 43 points. Uh, small gains on the market across the board. Gold is up about $16 while oil is flat to negative. And again, that's where we stand today. Come join the Research Center. Come join the Intraday Stock Chat. Take a free trial. Test it out. Make some money. Take care.